hear me or no? Okay, good. <coughs> well, good morning, everyone. <coughs> and uh, all right, good. Anyways, uh, I just want to be praying. Echo, uh, Brother Tony said, pray for Pastor and Miss Rachel. I know he didn't sound good. I, I seen him in the parking lot <coughs> for a long time. I, I couldn't tell what car it was. It was so foggy here this morning. And there was nothing happening. And he, he must have been in reverse or something because it looked like somebody was dumping garbage back there. So I, I couldn't tell what it was. So I texted to see if it was him, if he was at the church. And it took him a long time for me to text me back. And then I seen him <coughs> walking up the ramp on the cameras, and I knew it was him. But I, I knew he wasn't feeling good. And then when I seen him in his office, he, he wasn't feeling good. So uh, he, he gave me and Brother Tony a call this morning. So we kind of divided things up here a little bit. So uh, I just want to remind everybody to pray, pray, for, pray for them. And again, Brother Tony, was, the Sunday school was great. Um, the, about prayer, and I want to remind everybody again, I don't mean to be a stickler about this, but we do have our prayer request list. And those supplications that Brother Tony was talking about, that's our earnest prayer when we pray for one another. Amen. I mean, in here, you know, everyone in here, I pray every morning. I told you guys this before. I go over that prayer request sheet, and I hit those, and we're just so thankful for uh, the little boy that had his ulcer cure. I mean, and I'm going to attribute that to, to answer prayer. Uh, Louis, same thing. I mean, every morning I'm praying for Louis, you know. I mean, not only just on my own personal prayer list, which I, I, I use our list, but I have Louis on there, for, not just for only for salvation, but I have him on, on there for his uh, uh, cancer. So I, I, you know, I, that's why I left a little room on that prayer sheet. If you have your own personal requests, write them on there and go through that every morning. I mean, it, it's, it, you have to be faithful. And if you're not faithful, we're not, we're not going to get our prayers answered. So that's why it's really important. The, uh, I just... Pray that everyone had a good uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Uh, I, I mentioned this before. I used to be an alcoholic, and I never wanted to start the New Year's out with a hangover. So I always used to be the designated driver, if you can believe that. So uh, it's I'm just so thankful. And what turned this around for me is we I talked about this last time I was in Sunday school. When you get saved, you got to get into a good church. If you're not in a good church with fellowship. And that people that will encourage you, you're not going to know how to live your life. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, you know you're a sinner. You're saved uh, by the blood, by Christ. You're saved by grace through faith. But you're not going to know how to live your life. You're not going to know what things are really bad. Yeah, you know you're a sinner, but you don't know what things you shouldn't be doing or you should be doing. And that's why this is the, the, the manual of life. So uh, I want to it, it just, again, encourage people to pray for one another. Get in a good church. If you witness to somebody and you, they get saved, get their phone number and their address because if you don't follow up, like what happened to me, I was actually worse than when I, I, was, than, than when I got saved. So it's really important to do a follow-up when somebody gets saved. You need to get them in a good, good church. I'd rather see them be in a Baptist church, but just a really good church, a, a Bible-believing church. So this morning, I wanted to kind of sneak this in a while ago uh, I want to go over to the book of Haggai. When we were doing all this constructing and, and things, and, uh, you know, we got a little bit of pushback on some stuff like the new chairs and, and the, the remodeling in the back, you know, do we really need to do that? Well, we're building God's house, so to speak, rebuilding God's house so much what we did in the back, all the stuff we did in the back. So the book of Haggai talks about that. And... If you, it's a really interesting study, and I think, I don't know how I stumbled into this, but because we were doing all the remodeling and stuff, this kind of brought, brought it to bear in my mind what, what we're doing. So in the book of Haggai, we're going to most, I'll be mostly reading uh, most, through most of the first chapter, I think. But in the book of Haggai, the uh, history behind this is the, the Jews were in 70 years of captivity, and, and this is mentioned in the, in the book of Ezra. And then uh, Haggai and Zechariah was telling the, the courage of the people to rebuild the house of God. And the problem was they weren't doing it. So we're going to start here in, in uh, the book of Haggai, and if you don't know where it's at, so you don't have to look in the front of your book, it's uh, the third book before the New Testament. Okay, so um, I'm going to start reading. 
Uh, book of Haggai, chapter 1. I think I'm going to read down 1 through 5, and then I'm going to stop, and then we'll just continue reading. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetelah, governor of Judah, to Josiah, the son of jo Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the prophet, word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to, o ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie in waste? Now therefore, therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Tony, could you pray over this for me? Amen. So Haggai was a minor prophet, and that doesn't mean that he was minor in a, in a great way. He just he didn't seem to write a lot of stuff, like some of the other prophets, like uh, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel. So it's really a short book. There's only two chapters in this book. Um, so again, just to backtrack just a bit, like I said, they were in captivity for for 70 years, and they were told to go back and rebuild the uh, temple. So let's go back to uh, verse number two. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, this people say, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. So when the Jews returned, they found the temple destroyed, and they were, they were told to rebuild it. So after 18 years, being back in, in, the, in the land, uh, they received some opposition from the Samaritans to rebuild the house. So remember when Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall and the opposition that they had, and they were, they were, out, they were out there rebuilding the wall with a, a weapon in one hand and doing, using the other hand to rebuild the wall. So they stopped building the house. There was just a little bit of resistance there. So they said, well, it's, you know, it's too much work. It's too much of a hassle. We're not, we're, we're not going to do it right now. So they said, the time has not come. So we do that so many times in our own lives here when it, when it comes to doing things for the church. You know, we had the building project going on. Uh, I talked about this before. Each of us has a ministry in the church. We all have something to bring to the church. But a lot of times, we just don't feel like doing it. And so that we're, we're saying, well, the time has not come to do that. So what, what uh, Haggai is talking about here is about the sealed houses. And what the sealed houses were is they were building mansions at the time. The Jews had always had, had a lot of money. So instead of putting money in God's house, they took all their, their time and effort and their money into building their own houses. So when they talk about the sealed houses there, uh, in verse 4, it's actually talking about them spending all their time and energy and, and effort into building their own houses. And we do that so many times. We always put God second. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're sick, don't come to church, especially nowadays with so much stuff going around. But if you're not sick, you should be putting time in God's house. Right? right? Exhorting one another. That's, that's the whole key there. So in verse number five, and this is, this is what started this whole thing off. It says, now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Now, when I thought about that, and we're going to finish reading here, what that means is, really, people, you just don't get it. But we're going to see what's going on here. So just remember that. This is just my interpretation of this. It says, consider your ways. But it's like, really, people, you just don't get it. So as we finish reading here in verse 6, it says, you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is no none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. So what he's saying is, all this stuff is your, is, I'm doing this because you're not doing your job. Right. You know, so many times, you know, we, we, we lose a job. We want more money. We change jobs to get more money. That's not... That's really not necessarily what God wants for our life. 
you know, we, it's not our will, it's his will that should be done. So all these things that are happening to them, it's happening because they're not doing what God told them to do. He told them to rebuild the temple, and they didn't do it. So now all these things that are happening to them. So let me catch up on my notes here a little bit here. Okay, so like I, I read, you have sown much and you're bringing little. Okay, so it's like the crops aren't there. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. And that's like the wine and the stuff that they had. Their vineyards weren't, weren't producing. They cl you clothe you, but there is none warmth. So even their clothes weren't enough at the time because they had sheep and stuff, you know, to get the, the wool. But the sheep weren't prospering because there was a drought in the, in the land. We'll see this later. Uh, your, your money it didn't go far. It was like you had, your, your, your money bags had holes in it. Thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. So in, in verse number seven, he says it again. Thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. You're not, you're not seeing the big picture here, people. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And so we'll just keep reading here. Uh, okay, so here in verse eight, it says, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord of hosts. So what, is, what does that mean? That means that we should be doing, when it says go up to the mountain, we should be spending time with God. Amen. Moses went up to the mountain. That's right. Jesus went up to the mountain. Yeah. But we don't want to spend any time with God. Like Tony was talking about with prayer. Our, our, God talks to us through his word. Yes. Our prayer is talking to God. And nobody wants to spend time with God anymore. I mean, we, we talked about this before. I talked about it. Nobody wants to say grace over the meal anymore. I mean, it's just a 30-second prayer, but we're too embarrassed to say that in, 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 in a restaurant. We should be ashamed of ourselves. I mean, you don't have to make a – I do sometimes because I, I, I'll usually stand up. I'll raise my hands, but I'm not shouting so everybody in the restaurant can hear it. But if there's other tables around, they're going to hear it. And I usually try to get the gospel in there somewhere, so – so it says, go up in the mountains and bring wood. So what's that talking about? So one, we need to spend time with God. And two, bring wood means we bring our talents that we have to the church. Everybody's got a talent here. I don't care if it's just praying. If you can't do nothing else but pray, you can pray for the church. Some of us, like Brother John, myself, Brother Vipon, Brother Conley, Tony, Rod, all of us have some talent that we've used here somewhere along the line, especially in the rebuilding process here at the church. So it's really important, no matter who you are, you bring that, when you bring that talent to the church, you, you use it and, and be willing to use it. Same with your money. You know, people spend more, and this really bothered me, you know, when you think about the money that we spend on ourselves, you know, the, the Jews built their mansions. Most people will spend more money on a tip in a restaurant than they put in the offering plate. And we should be ashamed of ourselves. It's just crazy. You know, we, the, the Lord gives us 100%, and he only wants 10, right? That's the 90% we have to do something with. And actually, it's all his when you think about it. Like Brother Tony was talking about, if you help other people, I'm a firm believer in, in prayer, like Brother Tony was talking about this morning. I've had needs, and I have not felt good sometimes in the morning. And I'm listening to the radio, wait, it's there, it goes off, the alarm goes off, and I hear about some catastrophe somewhere, a church somewhere, a tornado hit or something, or illnesses going around. And I'll start praying for those other people. Amen. And within minutes, I feel better. Right. That's because I'm praying for other people. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah we, sometimes we need a prayer for ourselves. I don't like praying for myself, even... When I go at night, when I pray, I'm the last thing on the list. I want to make sure everything gets covered first. The other night I was so tired when we had Christmas over at my wife's uh, uh, nephew's house. I was tired. And she doesn't get out that much, and she, she wanted to visit, which is fine. So we get home a little after midnight. And when I went to bed, I was beat. I got my, I got my evening prayer list, and I got to the first couple things, and I fell asleep. So when I woke up, I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't pray. So now it's like, you know, I'm scrambling, you know, forgive me, Lord, for not, because, you know, there's certain, 
Pastor Ammon, Mrs. Ammon, I, 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 I came forward one time to have made a, a resolution to pray for them every day, which I have done every day, still to this day. So like I'm not, now I'm really feeling bad because I didn't pray for them. So now I'm scrambling to go through my, my evening prayer list. So like I said, we see so many times uh, when we're feeling down, try praying for somebody else. Yeah. It'll lift you up. It'll, it, a lot of times you get the healings that you need too. So it says, so you bring your talents, you build the house. And like I said, we don't want to do this grudgingly like, like we did here at Hope Baptist Church. A lot of people kicked in to do what they could do to, for building the house. Just like these seats. There was a little pushback on the seats when we got the seats because I like the pews. Well, I like good pews, but they were falling apart. But, but I'd rather, when the ladies, I think the ladies, you ladies want to pick these chairs out, which I'm so thankful for. But I'd rather be uncomfortable in church because of the preaching than because of the pews. All right? So like I said, so one, we got, the, we got some comfortable pews. We got a comfortable place where you can come and worship. We got the back room finished off. We got the kitchen. We got the bathrooms. We got the nursery. Right. So we're, in, in my mind, that's us rebuilding God's house. Right. And that, this is what Haggai is, Haggai is talking about here. Like I said, you don't want to do it grudgingly. Right. And you, you shouldn't be afraid to use your finances. Right. Um, like the, it's kind of like going back to the old past. I mean, even though we don't have the pews, but we're still getting people comfortable in church. Like I said, I'd rather have them uncomfortable because of the preaching. So, again, Haggai was talking about the, uh, let's see, we go to, let's go down to verse 10. Oh, it, it, okay, so why do we do this before I go there? Verse 9. So you go up to the mountains, you spend time with God, you bring your talents, we build the house, and why, why do we do all this? Because God says, God says, I will be glorified, saith the Lord. God gets the glory. Amen. Not us. It's not because I'm doing this or John Zoller's doing this or Brother Conley's doing this or uh, Brother Vipon's doing this. Yeah. The cleaning ladies, the ladies that supplied the food and the meals. It's not, it's not for our glory, right. right? It's for God's glory. That's why we did all this for God's glory. Amen. So in verse 9, it says, you look for much and it came to little. And when you, when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why saith the Lord of hosts? Because of my house that is in waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Again, Haggai is saying, you guys are putting more emphasis on, on your will than my will. Your agenda than my agenda. You know, so many times, you know, people can go to football. If it's raining, pouring, they can go to a football game, but they can't come to church. You know, they can go to the gym, but they can't go to church. They can go to yoga, but they can't come to church. And, and, I, and, I, and one of these things, I mean, I'm like, I do not like my family when they have things on Sunday. I, I, don't, I don't go to them. I don't go. They got a birthday party, whatever's going on, I do not, they know I will not go. Now, if it's after church and I can get back and forth, I'll go. But I'm putting God's house first. You know, and the Bible says, and for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And like I said, People don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And God knows that. So like Tony was talking about this morning, why your prayers don't get answered, because you're not putting God first. You've got to put God first. Uh, so verse 10, Therefore the heaven over you is stayed and from the dew, from the dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. I, and I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon the cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. So here's what happened again. God says, you guys ain't prospering. You're going to starve. You got no animals now, but there's a drought in the land. There's a famine. And he's saying, really, people, you just don't get it yet, right? So finally, finally, they start building the house, rebuilding the house. So... Uh, Haggai and Zechariah, they're the, they're the ones that are encouraging people to, to do this. So if we jump on over to chapter 2, verse 11, he, he kind of reiterates this. But here's, here's, here's the kicker. So the people are rebuilding the house. And he's asking the people, he gives these Pharisees some questions 
uh, is this clean or unclean? And what he's talking about there is, is the people's heart in it. Are, are they now rebuilding the temple because they have to or because they want to? And I told you people this story before. When I was in charge, I was taking, doing all the snow plowing and shoveling all this stuff when I could. You know, I'm out here in the middle of the night. I'm not bragging. I'm just, you know, I'm out here because I want to do something for the Lord. I wasn't doing it for Pastor Ammon. I was doing it because I want to do something for the Lord. I'd be out there, and I'm out there freezing my rear end off, right, pushing a snowblower around. And I'm looking up, and it's a nice starry sky, and I'm going, Lord, I'm doing this for you. Amen. So that's, that's, what, that's what Haggai is trying to get across to these people. You don't want to do it because you have to do it. Why? I don't want to tithe because I have to tithe to give money. Then don't give it. Yep. God doesn't want it anyway, sir. Yep. The, the, the thing is, you should give willingly, Willing. yeah. lovingly. Yeah. It's a form of worship. Sure so if you're, not, if, you're not doing what, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing uh, out of love, don't do it. Amen. Just like Tony talked about this morning when you, when you come up to the altar. You, you got to do it for the love of God, right. for the love of our people. Like I said, if, if you don't like the people here too, that's, that's another problem. So the, what he's saying here in verse 11, uh, let me read this here. Yeah, verse 11. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, if one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread, or pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, no. And then the next verse says, Then said Haggai, If one is, that is unclean by a dead body, touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then Haggai, then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, that which they offer there is unclean. So their heart wasn't in the work. That's what he's trying to say. If your heart's not in the work, don't do it. I'm not going to bless it. So then we go to, and verse number 16. Since the days were when one came to a heap, and 20 me- to a heap of 20 measures, but there were but 10. And one came to the press fat to draw out 50 vessels, but out of the press there were but 20. I smote you with blasting and with mildew, and with hail in, the, in the, all the labor of your hands. Yet ye tur- you turn not to me, saith the Lord. And he says, consider now. Again, you people, you just aren't getting it. He's saying, I'm the one that's causing this. They're thinking, well, it's the weather, it's global warming, blah, blah, blah. But he's saying, I'm the one that's causing this. Uh, verse 19. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine. And the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive tree hath not brought forth. From this day will I bless you. So he's saying, when you get your heart right, the church's heart is right. He's saying, I'm going to start blessing you. And that is the key. So, again, I'm saying, the, the main verse of this whole thing, the whole series is consider your ways. But I'm saying, really, people, you, you're just not getting it. You know, like I said, your marriage is in, in, in trouble, your finances are in trouble, uh, sickness in your family. It, it, we know that it rains on the just and the unjust. We know that. But sometimes these things, might, you might want to examine yourself and say, maybe it's because I'm not doing the things I should be doing. So if your heart is not on God's ways, you're going to be in trouble. Like I said, we want it our way, but we, we, we have a hard time having it God's way. So... My hope for 2023 is that Hope Baptist Church will grow. We'll have a better outreach in 2023. I mean, we did the, the Apple Fest. We did the flea market. And we probably could have We were really, really busy this year. I mean, I, some of us were busy. I, I, we all spent some time here. Uh, but the nativity, that, we had a lot of us spent some time here for that. But for 2023, I'm thinking that we have the church done. The seats are comfortable. The back area is great. Darla's got her kitchen. So we, we, should be able, we should be able to move forward, I think, here in 2023 with some kind of outreach. So that's my prayer and hope for Hope Baptist Church for 2023. So like I said, that's the end of my message there. I'm sorry to be so short, but I hope you got the gist of it. Consider your ways.
You know, if God spoke to your heart, make your way to an old-fashioned altar. It's always open at all times. And uh, uh, 136.